So we covered the Greek myth timeline from start to finish. Now it's time to go past Greece into Roman mythology. Now, Roman mythology, in a word, is uncreative. It's quite literally Greek mythology plus some other stories post-Trojan War. That's why I'm considering these Roman stories as just a continuation of the Greek mythology. So, Roman mythology starts with a dude named Aeneas. Aeneas is the son of Aphrodite, or for Rome, Venus, and lives in Troy. Aeneas' life gets turned upside down when Paris does his thing and starts the Trojan War. When Troy is burned, Aeneas rallies a team of men and oh so heroically runs away, setting sail across the Mediterranean. After six years of voyaging, he runs into Carthage in 1182, and meets the city's queen Dido and they fall in love. And Aeneas decides to stay with Dido in Carthage. He only stays there for a little bit before Aphrodite Venus comes down and is like, Hey, dude, there's a prophecy that you'll found an empire in Italy that will become the greatest in the world. Yeah, how about you go do that? So Aeneas thinks that founding an empire would be pretty neat and rallies his men and runs away again. Queen Dido, very distraught after the disappearance of her love, curses Aeneas and commits suicide. That curse condemns Rome to constantly fight Carthage in the much later Punic Wars. Aeneas reaches Italy and finds the local kingdom of the Latins. He meets the local king of the local kingdom, a dude named Latinus, and Latinus decides that Aeneas should marry his daughter Lavinia. But Lavinia is actually supposed to be married to another local king, so Aeneas kills that king, marries Lavinia, and after the death of Latinus becomes king of the Latins in 1180. Now, the land of the Latins, while it did have a king, was really a confederation of all the local cities. Aeneas founds the city of Lavinium, which becomes the home of the kings and the head of the confederation. However, Aeneas' descendants found another city named Alba Longa in 1151 BC, which soon becomes the next head of the confederation. Farther down Aeneas' descendants' line, we reach King Numitor. He was usurped by his brother Amulius, who kills Numitor's son and forces Numitor's daughter, Rhea Silvia, to become a Vestal Virgin, but keeps Numitor alive for some reason. As the name implies, a Vestal Virgin has to be celibate for 30 years. The idea was that Rhea Silvia couldn't have children and therefore no one could challenge Amulius for the throne. This does not work. Rhea Silvia actually encounters Ares, aka Mars, and Rhea Silvia has twin children. Amulius was like, oh no, now someone can challenge me for the throne, better kill those darn children before they kill me. But killing the children would risk the wrath of Ares Mars, so he throws them into the wilderness hoping they would die of natural causes. This does not work. The twin children, Romulus and Remus, are discovered and protected by a wolf until a local herdsman finds and raises them. After realizing that their grandfather is supposed to be the king, they roll up to Alba Longa, kill Amulius, restore Numitor, and roll out. Romulus and Remus decide that founding their own city would be pretty cool, so they get planning on what their city would be. They disagree on the location and break up to found two different cities next to each other. Romulus builds a wall around his land, and Remus walks up and jumps over the wall. Ha! Loser, says Remus. Your walls are so stupid. Look, I literally just jumped over them. How is that supposed to protect your city? Wow, your urban development skills are so lame. You should feel like a loser, because you are a loser. Loser. So, Remus dies, and Romulus builds his city in 753 BC, now with better walls, and names it Rome. Rome becomes a pretty popular place and gets a decent number of new citizens. There is just one problem. There is literally no women in the city. Romulus ponders this conundrum and thinks on how he could possibly resolve it. Maybe he could encourage the immigration of large families that included unmarried daughters, or maybe he could organize diplomatic missions to marry off women from other cities, or maybe he can give women a level of independence to incite them to come voluntarily. I got it, said Romulus. I'll steal the women. So he holds a super awesome party and invites the neighboring Sabine people. And when the Sabines are all busy partying, the Romans steal the women and fight off the men. Romulus promises the women a bunch of rights if they stay, and the Sabine women are cool with that and everything works out surprisingly okay. But the Sabine men are not happy at all, and a bunch of fighting occurs between Rome and the Sabines. The rest of Rome's history is a balancing act between three different wars with three different civilizations. Rome fights Alba Longa over control of the Latins, they fight the Sabines because they stole all the women, and they fight the Etruscans, who are also there. Rome eventually conquers these three regions, but they remain distinct cultures and have a huge influence over Rome. So much, in fact, that out of the next six Roman kings, one was a Sabine and two were Etruscans. These kings aren't that important, they just fight wars and add new things to the Roman government, for the exception of the last king, Tarquinius Superbus, or as I like to say, Superbus. Superbus was so super evil, everyone hated him. Rebellion erupted when a noblewoman named Lucrezia committed suicide due to Superbus's super evilness. 
This led to the overthrow of the king and the establishment of the Roman Republic in 509 BC, ending the mythological timeline and entering the historical timeline. Now, notice that the gods have a very minimal presence in these myths. Other than Aeneas and Rhea Silvia, the gods just aren't in it at all. Within a mythological context, this is kind of weird because the gods are famous for getting really involved in everything, and it adds to the mystery of the last video where the gods supposedly abandoned Greece for an unknown reason. I thought that the gods left Greece so that they could go to Rome, but if they aren't in Rome either, then where did they go? It's an interesting situation. Now, since the Greco Roman timeline has been taken from creation to historical, the basics of it are completed. Now an option is available. Stick with Greece and flesh out the timeline with more myths, or move to another culture. A poll will be held in the community tab. Whatever you pick will be the story for another video.